I'm gonna need some of your optimism on this question too. Mm. So can Uh-oh. the 49ers bounce back from the running back injury? So let's talk about it. Let me oh, preface good Lord. Or, or set this up for you a little bit. So we obviously know the offense for the 49ers is predicated on um, the running game being really, really effective. We saw Moster go out in week one, season ending injury, and we saw Mitchell jump in and just be just as explosive or you know good enough to where our rushing attack was still very, very good. Now, Mitchell is a little nicked up. Uh, Hasty is out, you know, high ankle sprain. That's probably four to eight weeks. Um, Mostert is gone for the season. Uh, Sermon is in the concussion protocol. So we have Cannon. We just signed, you know, a couple running backs as well. So the negative is, a uh, group that we thought was the deepest where we let go of a guy like Wayne <laughs> Gallman who had hun- like multiple hundred yard games last season. Yep. Now we're, you know, trying to find, you know, I don't want to say the scraps because these are all NFL players, but they are, we're trying to find, you know, whoever, you know, from the people that ha- aren't on a roster. Right. So that's the negative. The positive is, The 49ers have shown the ability to bring in people that you don't know or have been undervalued by other teams, and they could be extremely effective in this running scheme. So with those two sides of the pendulum swinging, which way does it go, Rob? Ooh, that's a tough call. Let me first preface it by saying that I'm with you 100%. Even these, you know, quote unquote scrubs that they're picking off of people's practice squads let's let's put it in the correct frame of reference which is these are some of the best of the best athletes in the world right these are people that are tops of their craft even everyone on practice squads throughout the league if you would equate that with whatever you are as an audience member here in your field it would be as if you were the top one tenth of one percent of whatever it is you do for a living that's how good these people are But relative to the starters that we lost, they are no comparison. There is a steep drop-off. When you lose Mostert, and Kyle Shanahan touched on this, you have to scrap some plays from your playbook because the other players that are replacing him just don't have the physical skill set that Mostert has in order to get around the edge at that speed. The way in which he can turn a corner within this offense is elite, and we will miss that. And to then have your depth tested at the position when you've already lost your number one running back, you have put your your presumptive second string running back into the doghouse. So he didn't get any snaps the, the first week. And then he comes out and gets a concussion. Now he's in the concussion protocol. The guy who came out and crushed it week one has a, you know, dinged up shoulder from having to try and force it into the end zone doesn't look like he's going to play this week. You're picking up Trenton Cannon, who is the special teams ace that got one carry on Sunday. I don't expect much from him. I think he's there to be a gunner and a return man on kickoffs. And then carry on Johnson. That's an interesting one. I'll put a pin in that and come back to it. But a previous second round draft pick. So clearly the talent is there. Uh, I think it's pronounced Jacquez. Uh, Jacquez, someone like that, but Jacquez yeah. Patrick, big guy, a throwback to the Kevin Barlow days for the 49ers. Ooh. He's pushing 230. Gotta love that. Yeah. And then another practice squad guy, Chris Thompson, who anyone who plays fantasy football knows who Chris Thompson is because he was a waiver wire pickup that could have won you your league in some of those years he had with the Redskins in PPR leagues where you're, you're catching passes out of the backfield. Football so team, there, football team. There's, yeah, there's, there's some, uh, well, that's right. Washington football team. My <laughs> apologies. Uh, it, it is, I mean, it, it's crazy that we're looking at a completely new roster in the backfield. It's, it's just nuts. The amount of turnover that has happened there. And so it was a deep room to begin with. It was an area of strength. But now we're back to being tested. We're back to Bobby Turner's ability to really turn players around and get more out of them, not only find the talent, not only find the gems, but be able to coach them up to the point where they execute within this system. So what does it mean for the 49ers in the long run? I still believe 
in this running back room. I think that we will get reinforcements back when Jeff Wilson returns to the team. That's huge. I'm not entirely beyond the idea of if we end up a playoff team with Mostert's surgery, I'm not entirely convinced that he doesn't come back at some point if it looks optimistic. This is the end of a contract year for him. I just I just struggle to see him staying out the whole year. But I know that's, that's a pipe dream uh, on some level. I just feel that with this run-blocking offensive line, with the talented coaching staff, I have the faith that even with the decreased bodies, they'll be able to get the job done. Yeah. I mean, we obviously... So here's... I, I hate to say this, but... I think our success in the running game has more to do with the scheme than the backs. Case in point... Two running backs that have left the 49ers since this whole thing has happened that used to have, you know, pretty decent games with the 49ers are um, Tevin Coleman, who's now with the Jets. Right. And Matt Breida, who was averaging, what, four yards a carry when he um, was with the 49ers and looked like a guy who had all-world speed and you know, why would you let go of Brita? But what's Brita done since he's left the 49ers? What's Coleman done since he's left the 49ers with the Jets, right? Um, and maybe Coleman's more, you know, he's a little bit, you know, longer in the tooth than obviously um, Brita. But I am, I believe this running back room is going to be a fine. I really believe that Kyle Shanahan and Bobby Turner know the type of running back that succeeds in this system and they just pick them up. And as long as George Kittle is healthy, as long as Kyle Juszczyk's healthy, as long as this offensive line is healthy, McGlinchey, Mack, um, Trent Williams, I think this running back room is, is not going to skip a beat. And the reason for that is I think it's more scheme than it is, you know, the talent there. Now, obviously when you have the talent plus the scheme, you get Raheem Mostert, 10-yard average per play, right. right? But we don't need 10 yards per play. We need three to five yards per play. And if the hole is you – know, if you're a running back and you're used to, like, having to cut a multiple times to find a hole and then you just have now one cut and, you know, hit a hole, I think these, these, these running backs are just going to eat because it's going to be, you know, the easiest reads that they have. Just follow use check. Just go wherever Kittle is, you know, like, and that's kind of what I think we're going to see. And do I expect to see the 30-yard touchdowns, 40-yard, 60, 80-yard touchdowns that we could see from a guy like Mitchell and Moster? Maybe not. Probably not. But I do expect us to see running backs that average three to five yards per play. And if you're averaging three to five yards per play three times, that's a first down. You're moving the ball. And I think that's more what we're going to see. And I think the running game is going to be fine. I like that prediction. I think we're in agreement there. And you have to wonder with a, a, a clearly a talented player, Carry On Johnson, who, who had the talent to be drafted in the second round. You wonder if it couldn't all click and come together for him in an offense like this. That is, as long as you understand the concepts and the blocking schemes, you find those holes and you hit one cut gone. As long as you can execute like that, this is an offense set up for success for running backs. So you wonder if he'll realize some of that untapped potential. I agree. So, yeah, man, until I – look, the one thing that's been consistent with the 49ers is as long as the offensive line is healthy, as long as Kittle's healthy, as long as Juszczyk's healthy, whomever's back there running the ball is going to look like the best running back in the league at a certain point. Maybe not the best. Derrick Henry is pretty damn good. But, I mean, yes, like, he is. one of the top running backs, you know – they're going to look like, hey, they should be number one draft pick on fantasy, right? So, um, so yeah, I think that we're going to be all right. 